Welcome, space enthusiasts. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey to explore an intriguing question. Why hasn't NASA sent humans back to the moon since the Apollo missions? The successful landing of astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon in 1969 was a historic milestone and a massive triumph for the United States. The Apollo program not only showcased the capabilities of human space exploration, but also fostered advancements in science, technology, and engineering. The moon missions laid the groundwork for subsequent space exploration endeavors, inspiring generations and expanding our understanding of the cosmos. In the subsequent three years, 10 additional astronauts traveled to the moon. However, since December 14, 1972, humanity has not set foot on the lunar surface, which begs the question, why has there not been a recent manned mission to the moon? The technology to send people to space has been viable for decades now, yet manned space missions seem to be a thing of the past. One issue is budget constraints. The Apollo program was a massive undertaking that required significant financial resources. As the United States faces economic challenges and competing priorities, there has been a decrease in public and political support for the high costs associated with manned lunar missions. According to a 2023 poll conducted by Pew Research, only 12% of approximately 10,000 people polled thought that the United States should prioritize manned missions to the moon. NASA's portion of the federal budget, 4%, was highest in 1965, not long before the Apollo mission occurred. In the present day, NASA only has a 0.5% piece of the budgetary pie. Returning to the moon would eat up a majority of that budget, which NASA might want to use for other endeavors. According to Apollo 7 astronaut Walter Cunningham, manned exploration is the most expensive space venture and consequently, the most difficult for which to obtain political support. Designing, building and testing the sophisticated spacecraft, landers and life support systems required for human space travel involve advanced technologies and engineering. Ensuring the safety and reliability of these systems is a complex and costly process. Human spaceflight demands an exceptionally high level of safety and stringent measures are implemented to protect astronauts' lives. Every component of a manned mission must undergo rigorous testing and quality control to meet strict safety standards, adding to the overall cost. Another significant expense is the cost of launching payloads into space. Large, powerful rockets are needed to transport the substantial mass of spacecraft, landers and other equipment required for lunar missions. Launching heavy payloads comes with high costs. Conversely, the maintenance of ground-based infrastructure, including mission control centers, communication networks and tracking systems, is yet another expensive necessity. While advancements in technology and increased collaboration may help reduce costs over time, the inherent challenges of sending humans to the moon continue to make such missions an expense that is difficult to justify. Another factor in the lack of additional manned missions to the moon is that NASA's priorities have changed since the 1970s. After successfully achieving the goal of landing humans on the moon and returning them safely to Earth, NASA shifted its focus to other space exploration objectives. The Space Agency began to concentrate on developing technologies for future missions, such as the Space Shuttle Program and the International Space Station, ISS. Commentators such as astronaut Buzz Aldrin have also cited political obstacles to returning to the moon. In the United States, there's been a long history of one president approving certain NASA projects and research, only for the next president to come along and completely reshuffle those goals. These ongoing alterations to the priorities at NASA have led to numerous cancellations, estimated losses of approximately 20 billion and years of wasted time and energy. Aldrin has said he believes that a return to the moon would require a bipartisan congressional and administration commitment to sustained leadership. The political climate is more divisive than ever, and it's highly uncertain whether this bipartisan commitment is possible in present-day America. Another reason that humanity hasn't returned to the moon is shockingly simple. The moon is not a safe place for humanity, and moon missions can be extremely dangerous. Thanks to the numerous boulders and craters that cover the moon's surface, safe landings are very difficult. When working on the Apollo program, NASA had to intricately map out the surface of the moon using satellites. Mapping the moon's surface was not easy or cheap. In today's dollars, it cost about 10 billion. Moon dust, also known as lunar regolith, 
is another factor that makes travel to the moon potentially dangerous. Lunar regolith consists of tiny, sharp-edged particles created over billions of years by the constant bombardment of micrometeoroids. These particles are extremely fine and abrasive, with edges that can be as sharp as glass shards. Inhaling or coming into contact with these particles causes irritation to the respiratory system and damage to the eyes and skin. The moon has very little atmosphere to protect its surface from solar wind and cosmic rays. As a result, lunar dust becomes electrostatically charged due to interactions with charged particles from the sun. This charge can cause the dust to cling to surfaces, spacesuits and equipment. Inhaling or ingesting charged particles could potentially lead to health issues. The moon's climate is extremely harsh overall. The moon's relative lack of an atmosphere means it is totally unprotected from harsh solar rays and deadly solar radiation. During approximately two-week intervals, the side of the moon that is visible from Earth undergoes extreme changes in temperature. This hemisphere of the moon can go from being scorching hot to being one of the coldest places in the solar system in a matter of days. For most people, these explanations for the lack of further manned moon exploration are sufficient. However, some members of the public remain unsatisfied and seek alternate explanations. One such explanation is one of the oldest and best-known conspiracies. Maybe we can't go back to the moon because we never went in the first place. According to polls, between 6 and 20% of Americans believe that NASA staged the Apollo moon landings using manipulated photos, scripted videos, and various deceptive tactics to mislead the public. Advocates of this viewpoint argue that the technological capabilities of the era were insufficient for astronauts to embark on a successful journey to the moon and safely return. They also highlight possible signs of studio manipulation. For example, the flag planted on the moon by the Apollo 11 crew appears to flutter in the wind, despite being in the vacuum of space. There also are no stars in any of the photos taken on the moon. Believers in the hoax theory believe that NASA deliberately chose not to include stars, because astronomers would have been able to use the stars' celestial positions to determine whether the photos were taken from the Earth or the moon. Theorists also argue that the lighting and shadow in moon photos is inconsistent, which they believe is evidence that moon photos were actually created with artificial lights on a soundstage. Notably, the Apollo moon landings occurred during the Cold War, a period of intense competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. Some theorists suggest that the moon landing was fabricated as part of a Cold War propaganda effort to demonstrate American technological superiority. In May 2023, Dmitry Rogozin, the ex-director general of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, voiced skepticism regarding the US moon landings. He conveyed dissatisfaction with the negative responses he received when seeking evidence. In Russia, the moon landing hoax theory is even more popular than in the United States. 28% of Russians polled believe that the Apollo moon mission never happened. However, most astronauts and researchers believe that the moon landing hoax theory has been debunked by overwhelming scientific evidence, including photographs, videos, rock samples, and the accounts of thousands of people involved in the Apollo program. They believe that any perceived anomalies in the moon landing footage are actually the result of misunderstandings, photographic artifacts, or limitations of the equipment used at the time. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin when questioned in person by a conspiracy theorist, was so enraged by the hoax allegations that he punched his would-be interviewer in the face. Despite this, the theory that the moon landing never happened has remained consistently popular for decades, with many books and documentaries on the topic being produced. The debate between scientists and moon landing skeptics continues to rage on. We've taken a captivating journey through the history and challenges surrounding manned missions to the moon. It's clear that the moon holds a unique place in our cosmic aspirations, even if mankind hasn't visited in many years. Do you think we'll see humans return to the lunar surface in the near future? Do you think the moon landing really happened? What challenges and opportunities lie ahead in our quest for continued lunar exploration? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.